Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day in the Lord. I'm back to talk to you a little bit more about what happened in the Garden of Eden when God said, don't eat of the fruit of that tree and don't even touch it. And I explained to you on the prior video why God said not to touch it. Now, how could touching a tree be dangerous? And I said it was because of what grows on the tree. And then when I told you what could possibly grow on a tree, besides the fruit and the leaves, I told you what grows on the body of the tree, the bark of the tree, which is mold. And I told you what happens when you touch mold. You touch mold and it instantly releases invisible spores, millions of them that go into the air. And you breathe in those spores and they get inside your body and they start to replicate. And you know, uh, mold likes dark, damp, moist environments. Well, inside a body, don't you think it's warm? It's 98.6 degrees and it's damp and it's dark. And don't you think it would be a, um, a primary location for mold to flourish and to find a home where it could multiply and replicate and survive? Well, I want to show you something that you've probably seen many, many times and didn't understand what the heck it was. There's something called the lichen that grows on the tree bark. Okay, and I'll show you what it looks like. You see that? I think I think that uh, I noticed some kind of a reflection here, but I think you've all passed the tree and saw that blue green stuff that is affixed to the bark of the tree. It's called lichen. And um, just let me just tell you a little bit about what lichen is, okay? Uh, lichen, uh, any of or about 15,000 species of plant-like organisms that consist of a symbiotic association of algae, usually green, or cyanobacteria, whichever you want to call it, and fungi, okay? And it was these two organisms, the blue-green algae and the fungi that merged together and helped each other coexist. And this is what symbiosis is. One organism helps the other organism and it leaves it alone. It allows it to flourish. And usually one provides food for the other. Just like in our bodies, they help us break down our food when we digest and the byproduct of what we eat usually turns into a sugar and they eat it. See, they eat it. We help them, they leave us alone. And I said, until the environment inside our body becomes threatening to them, and then once the environment becomes threatening to them, they start to morph into other things because the survival is what they're all about. And now their survival is at your expense, which means they become, they were friendly in the beginning and now they become parasitic. 
which means they're feeding off of you because you're not feeding them what they want anymore and now they're destroying the host. All right, uh, let's get a little bit more into this um, here. What are they? They are actually two organisms, a fungi and an algae. And the two organisms, they, they came together to form a symbiotic or mutually beneficial relationship. The fungi provides protection and a place for the algae to live while the algae provide energy at, via the photosynthesis because you know the algae makes their and it gets their energy from the sun all right so um, this is a a very mutualistic and cooperative it's a relationship okay it's a relationship this is the relationship that it, that exists in our bodies Okay, it's basically a bacteria and a fungus that have merged together that now occupy our body and we have now become dependent on them. And uh, you see, this is one reason why we need to be born again. Okay, we need to be born again. We need to have that, uh, uh, we need to be on the mountain of transfiguration like Jesus was in order to receive that new body where these microorganisms have then been evicted from us so that we can be free of the prison body, free. And this is where the term free comes into play when we think of Jesus, that we are free in Jesus, okay? Let me just tell you a little bit about what it means to be free in Jesus. Okay, just one second while I pull this information up. All right, what does the word free mean? Free means not united with, okay? Not united with. <laughs> These organisms are united with us. And to be free in Jesus means he's going to teach you how to unhook from these microorganisms so that you might be free, okay? It means not attached to, not combined with, not mixed with something else. It means to relieve or to rid of what restrains you, what confines you, okay? To disentangle, to clear it away, okay? That's what it means to be free in Jesus because Jesus did that in his ministry. He fasted, he prayed. He meditated. He got his food from his mother. The Holy Spirit helped him to evict what he was born with. Born of a woman. That's what born of a woman means. Because these microorganisms get passed down to us when we're born from generation to generation to generation. We're all in this prison body. But Jesus broke free. And he broke free from these microorganisms on that mountain of transfiguration. Metamorphosis on that mountain of transfiguration means he changed from one thing to another. Just like a moth goes into that sack and he changes into a beautiful butterfly and he's a different creation than when he started. Transform means to go from one thing to another. When you go from that incorruptible to the incorruptible, what does incorruptible mean? If you look it up, it means it cannot rot. 
It will not rot. It will not decompose. And from that incorruptible body, you now have, you have now put on immortality, which means they can't touch you. They cannot touch you. This is what Jesus's ministry was about. In the 20th century, they added the word for before the word free. Okay? The word for and this combination sets a lot of people on edge because the main objection to the, fa the phrase for free is that um, there's no cost involved. See, there's no transaction of money. See? Um, and it should never have been put before the word free because it when you think of the word free now you think of something that comes to you with no suffering with no cost I get it for free and you know there was an intention that people from this world put that word for in front of the word free because it appeals to the human nature of people because everybody wants something for free that they didn't earn and this is why when you look at the world today, everybody gets upset when they see everybody else who wants an entitlement. Even though they didn't deserve that entitlement. They give kids trophies and ribbons for doing nothing, just for showing up. Yay, 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 he came here. He deserves, he deserves a ribbon, he deserves a trophy. This is the human nature of the corrupted flesh. The world knows this. And this is why they're feeding you food after food on the food network and feeding you big gigantic meals in the restaurant. Because they want you to keep feeding these microorganisms and they don't want you to be free. Jesus wanted you to be free. Okay? If you follow the line of this reasoning putting the word for free, for in front of the word free, it means to say that something is offered for nothing. For nothing. Yet Jesus paid 40 days in the desert with no food. And yet, you just get handed it for free. Okay, synonyms and adjectives of the word free by itself, not with the word for in front of it, free meaning autonomous, independent, self-governing. You govern yourself. You don't have to listen to those microorganisms to process your food. You don't need them to process your food anymore. Separate. You're separate. You disentangled yourself from them. You're separate. Not like the Chabad Jews that wear a black hat and a long black coat and all kinds of clothing and separate themselves from the world. That's not what Jesus meant when he said to be separate. He meant separate from this. Not in some cult. Freestanding, self ruling, sovereign, like God Himself, sovereign. And verbs discharge, emancipate, enlarge, loosed, unchain, unbind, uncage, unfettered. People, you, you, if you don't know this, you're not following the Holy Spirit. You're following Paul. And when you follow Paul, you stay under the oral law of the Jews. You're never going to be free. You're never going to get to that mountain of transfiguration where you can throw off 
the union that merged with you since the garden, that was Jesus' ministry to free you from that. Free you. Free you from the symbiosis that got inside of you that now controls everything in your life. Controlling your addictions, controlling your eating habits, control, controlling your sexual appetites, controlling your anger, controlling your emotions, controlling everything. Listen and learn. Stop just reading the scriptures over and over and over and over again and think you're being fed manna. Where is the hidden manna in that? No, I'm giving you the hidden manna right here, right now. Let those who have ears to hear, hear it. In the name of Jesus.